Today we're talking about how to find the best dividend stocks in the entire stock market. This is if you're trying to add dividend stocks to your current portfolio or build out a new dividend portfolio. These criteria and this dividend checklist we're going to talk about can be super valuable to you to find the best dividend stocks you can possibly own in your portfolio. So we're going to talk through the dividend stock criteria and a little checklist and then we'll use two example companies and we'll look at each individual criteria with that example company and decide if this is a good, great, or bad dividend stock to buy in a portfolio. I'm excited to get into this one. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Austin. I'm a co-owner of cloudmusicweek.com. I'm also a stock market investor, and I'm not exclusively a dividend stock investor, but roughly 30% of my entire portfolio is in dividend-paying companies. Real quick, if you're not subscribed, become one of those 3,700 or so people and drop a like on the video. That helps out the channel in a massive way. I appreciate you doing that. Let's jump into the video. So we're going to talk about the dividend criteria and the dividend checklist first, and we're going to go through each one of these points and why it's important that each one of your stocks adheres to these points. The best dividend stock gets a check mark on every single criteria on the checklist. So let's jump into it. The first thing I need to look at in a dividend stock is, is the revenue growing? This seems probably pretty obvious, but a lot of people buy dividend stocks out there where the revenue is in decline, actually. So if the revenue is in decline, that probably means that the earnings per share is going to be in decline over the coming years. And if earnings per share is in decline, that means over the long term, the dividend is either not going to get raised anymore or get cut, which is one of the worst things you can have for a dividend stock that you own. Not only does it hurt the dividend payout itself, but almost always when, when a dividend gets cut or eliminated, it hurts the stock price in a major, major way. I've seen stocks go down 30, 40, 50% in just a few days after they cut their dividend or after they eliminated their dividend. It can really crush a share price. And then the next criteria is very well linked to this, and that's earnings growth and specifically earnings per share growth. So we want strong earnings per share growth because like I said, we want strong dividend growth over time. If I'm buying a dividend stock today and it pays me $1 per year, I don't want it to pay me $1 next year as well. I want it to bump up to maybe a dollar and five cents or a dollar and 10 cents, something like that. I want dividend growth over time as well as share price appreciation. I don't just want a really high dividend today that's gonna stay stagnant for years and years and years. So we're looking for dividend growth companies here, which means we need earnings growth so they can keep on growing that dividend larger every single year. And then the next criteria is what I just said. We want dividend growth over a three, five, and 10 year span, we wanna see that dividend growing over time. Really, we wanna be in the double digits of dividend growth, somewhere around 10 to 18%. 18% would be an absolute beast on the dividend growth side. 10% would be very respectable. And then to get a little more specific as we're trying to find those best dividend stocks in the stock market, we want the EPS, which is the earnings per share, to be growing faster than the dividend is increasing so that they have more and more room to increase the dividend going forward so that they don't get in a position of they don't have enough money to pay out a larger dividend the next year. And then the next one is that we want a low payout ratio. Payout ratio means if a company earns a dollar per share of EPS, and then they're paying out 60 cents per share of EPS on a yearly basis, that's a 60% payout ratio. That's about as high as we would want the payout ratio for a really, really high quality dividend growth stock, about 60%. Even lower than that is even better. And one of our examples is way, way lower than that that we'll look at later in this video. So a low payout ratio so that I know that even if they have a slightly tough time for a year or two years with their EPS, their earnings per share, they can still grow that dividend because they're not maxed out in terms of the payout ratio. They're not paying out all of their earnings to shareholders. Another thing about a low payout ratio is that we want them to retain some earnings so they can invest back into the business and grow the revenue revenue and grow their earnings for many, many years to go in the future. If they're paying out 80%, 90%, 95% of their earnings, they're not going to be able to retain any of that to invest back into the business and grow into a beastlier and beastlier company. And then the last criteria is that we want a stock that is in a hard to abate and hard to disrupt industry. Something like railroad companies, something like aerospace and defense companies. It's going to be extremely hard, if not nearly impossible, for a brand new railroad company to come in and start to take market share from the old guys. Same with the aerospace and defense company. Not everyone can just start an aerospace and defense company and start stealing market share like crazy. So hard to abate 
and hard to disrupt industries is really what we'd like to have with a dividend company so that we know that that company is going to be around for a decade, two decades, three decades to go in the future, or even way longer than that. So the best dividend stock out there has every single point on that checklist, and all those growth metrics are higher rather than lower, okay? So now we're gonna analyze two specific companies using this checklist. We're gonna check out all those criteria and see how these two companies are doing on those metrics. And the first company is Visa. We all know Visa, massive payment handler. So very hard to disrupt very hard to abate. We really need Visa, we need payment handlers, and it's really hard to disrupt Visa. It's not like you can just create a new payment processing company and start to steal market share overnight or within a six month or a year span. Visa is going to be around for an extremely long time. And to put it simply, Visa is not going anywhere anytime soon. So it's got that point on the checklist right there. Now let's look at some growth metrics. The revenue growth for Visa is a little bit above 10%, which is very respectable. That revenue is growing. It's in the double digits. We like to see that. It doesn't have to be as high as 10%. Even just a 5 or 7 or 8% growth is still very respectable for an established dividend paying company. But Visa is looking nice at a 10%. Moving on to the earnings per share growth. And I want to use the gap numbers, the generally accepted accounting principles numbers. On a trailing basis, they've got about 18% EPS growth. And on a forward basis, meaning 12 months into the future, they've got just under 17% EPS growth. Those are very respectable numbers. And to see EPS growing faster than revenue is very important, creating kind of a positive flywheel effect for a crazy profitability growth in the future. And then the next thing is dividend growth. They have very strong dividend growth at 15.93% over the past five years. That's a five-year compounded growth rate. So every year for the past five years, they've grown that dividend by about 16% on average. And they've been growing the dividend for 15 years straight. So they have a track record of returning cash to shareholders for 15 years in a row, they've been growing it. And if we remember the EPS growth was somewhere between 18 and 16 percent so to see the eps growth higher than that dividend growth is very important so they can keep on growing that dividend year in and year out and still be able to retain enough money to invest back into the business and speaking of investing back into the business the payout ratio being low allows the company to do that as well visa's payout ratio right now is an extremely impressive 21.36%. That is definitely way lower than the maximum payout ratio we'd like to see with the ideal dividend company of 60%. That's a third of that. 21% is very impressive. They have a ton of room to grow that dividend for many years to go in the future. And that's even if the EPS growth slows down a little bit and they have a slight slump in the business, they're still going to be able to raise that dividend because they have so much room to raise that payout ratio and raise that dividend still, even if the EPS doesn't go up, like I said. Now, the only thing that's kind of weak with Visa is actually the dividend yield. The dividend yield is less than 1%. It's 0.75%. So for every $10,000 you have invested with Visa stock, you'll be getting $75 of dividend payments this year. But the silver lining with Visa stock is that they're going to keep on growing that dividend very respectably, somewhere around 16% every single year. I doubt that number is going to go down at all. I think they'll slowly raise it over time to return more more cash to shareholders through dividends. And the second company we're gonna analyze is waste management. So waste management is a trash hauler, hard to abate industry, hard to disrupt industry. To have the infrastructure to be able to actually provide this service to as many homes as waste management does, as many businesses as waste management does, is extremely costly. And it would take years and years and years for a company to get to the size where they're actually taking market share away from somebody like waste management. Just like Visa, waste management is not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's jump over to growth. Revenue growth with this is a little bit weaker. 3.83% on a trailing basis, 5% on a forward basis. We still have revenue growing though, and that's what we like to see. As long as the revenue is not shrinking and they are growing the revenue, we're still happy. And there's something good that I'll show you here in a sec. The more growth, the better, but this is still respectable for an extremely established company like Waste Management. EPS growth, looking at the gap numbers. EPS growth on a trailing basis, 5%. EPS growth on a forward basis, they're expected to grow by 13.5%. And then over a three to five year span, the expected CAGR on EPS is about 10.5%. 
the five-year compounded annual growth rate of the dividend is 8.36%, which is a little bit higher than the trailing EPS growth, but substantially lower than the forward EPS growth. So this is kind of a mixed bag, right? Next year, they're expected to grow EPS more than 13%. This past year, they only grew it by 5%. With the five-year dividend growth rate being 8.36%, it is a little bit below that so that the company can keep on growing the dividend, as we know, and keep on investing back into the business. They're keeping their payout ratio very respectable at 42.99%. That is well below the threshold that we like to see of about 60%. They've got it all the way down at 42.99%. So they have plenty of room to keep on growing the dividend in future years. And the dividend yield right now is about double of what Visa's dividend yield is at 1.44%. So for every $10,000 you have invested with waste management stock, you'll be getting $144 this year in dividend payments. And on top of all that, waste management stock is up more than 93% over the past five years, outpacing the gain of the S&P 500 by just a little bit, while boasting a slightly higher dividend than the S&P 500 index of a 1.31%. It is absolutely possible to beat the index with dividend paying stocks, especially dividend growth stocks like waste management and like Visa. There are many other stocks out there left to be explored. And the next step is to use this checklist and to use this criteria to check out some dividend stocks for yourself. You can get a really good gauge on the company's health and the dividend safety by looking at these different metrics and see where that dividend is going to go over the future years. And it can give you a good idea of what kind of returns you're going to get over that time and what kind of dividend growth you're going to get over the time and whether or not they can sustain that into the future. I hope this video is valuable to you. You can use this checklist to go find some very quality dividend stocks and get passive income from those dividend stocks and get share price appreciation over time. We don't wanna be owning companies that are paying great dividends, but their share price is decreasing. Maybe we get 15% a year from some of these crazy high dividend payers, but if the stock price is declining by 15% a year, what's the point? Not to mention those really high dividend yield companies often aren't able to grow their dividend at all and sometimes have to cut that dividend or eliminate it completely a few years down the line from that. Those are what we call dividend traps. Please make sure you're staying away from those. Use this criteria. Use the checklist that we talked about in this video. Go out there and make some money. I appreciate you being here in a major way. Hope you got some value out of this video. Thanks for stopping by. Have an amazing night.